with no Vergiani Speciale, the F8 is Ferrari's last non-hybrid V8 supercar. However, here's the thing. Is the F8 truly worthy of being the final tribute to the outgoing Ferrari V8? So it all began way back in 1973 with the introduction of the Dino 308 GT4. The Dino 308 GT4 morphed into the Ferrari 308 and then downstream from the Ferrari 308 came the 328, the 348, the 355, the 360, the 430, the 458, the 488 and now we're standing here with the final tribute to the last of the Ferrari V8 supercars the Ferrari F8 Spider. The F8 was introduced in 2019 with the F8 Tributo and ran until, well, current date, 2023. They're still being delivered to customers. The F8 was inaugurated with the F8 Tributo, which superseded the 488 Pista Spider. Now the 488 Pista and the F8 share exactly the same engine. And this was a big bone of contention for 488 Pista owners because they thought they were getting a specialized, limited in production run, 488 piece to track version with a specialized unique engine when in fact Ferrari then went and put exactly the same engine in the F8 Tributo and the F8 Spider. So I'm not going to go into any great comparative detail between the F8 and the 488 Pista. Why? Well, because we're going to be providing a video for you later on, which will provide a full comparison between the F8 and the 488 Pista. But I'll give you some initial statistics. The F8 Spider weighs in at 1,005 kilograms, some 70 kilograms heavier than the F8 Tributo. Now the 488 Pista Spider weighs in at 1,485 kilograms. So the F8 Spider is some 20 kilograms heavier than the 488 Pista Spider. So this is the 2021 F8 Spider. Now the F8 Spider harks back as the F8 Tributo name suggests, it's the precursor to the Spider, harks back to some of the legendary earlier cars. For example, the F8 Tributo, not the Spider version, but the F8 Tributo has a three slotted Lexan engine cover, which harks back to the Ferrari F40. In addition, when you look at the rear of the car, these quadruple rear tail lights, they hark back also to the design of the Ferrari F40. Now, while we're here looking at the rear of the car, we can talk a little about the aerodynamics because this has an, what's called active aero working on the rear diffuser. In effect, you have flaps underneath the rear diffuser that come out into the airflow and change the aerodynamics of the car relative to the speed and the dynamics of the car as it's moving forwards. This produces 10% more downforce overall with the aerodynamics of the car over the 488 Spider. You'll probably hear some supercars starting up in the background because we're here at Five Zeros in Bratton and Avon. So thanks very much to Five Zeros of Bratton and Avon for providing or for connecting us with the owner of this stunning F8 Spider. So there it is guys, this is what it's all about. 3.9 litre twin turbo V8, pushing out 710 brake horsepower, 568 pound foot of torque, not to 62 in 2.9 seconds, and a top end of 211 miles per hour. You might recognize those, st those statistics because those statistics are exactly the same as the 408 Pista, apart from the 0-62. The 0-62 for the 408 Pista is 2.85 seconds, as opposed to this for the, for the F8, which is 2.9 seconds. And that's because the F8 Spider is some 20 kilograms heavier than the 408 Pista Spider. So this is the biggest bone of contention between owners of the F8 and owners of the 408 Pista, in particular with regards to owners of the 408 Pista. In effect, Ferrari provided the exactly the same engine that was put into the 48 Pista for the F8, for the F8 Tributo and for the F8 Spider. So the Pista owners thought that they were getting a very specialized engine that was only going to be provided unique to the 48 Pista and the 48 Pista Spider. But then Ferrari went to put exactly the same engine in the F8 Tributo and the F8 Spider. Now these cars are, these engines are derived from the 48 Challenge car. So as such, 
They have a lightened hardened crankshaft, lightened pistons, a lightened flywheel, and carbon fiber plenum chambers. So I'm going to give you a quick walk around of the FH design and we're going to go into the specifics of the particular options that were chosen for this particular F8 Spider. So this is Rosso Corsa with a black Nero interior. The F8 is very unique when comparing to its predecessor, which is the 488. The F8 has more compact LED lighting system. This is also has the AFS lighting system, so it's the automatic lighting system. So in effect, the lights follow the steering has more compact lighting system which provides the capability to have some more ducting, some venting here to be able to provide additional cooling for the front brakes. There is additional cooling also in the front splitter to provide cooling for the front brakes. So in effect, the, the brakes get cooled through air coming in through the front side section here in the front splitter section and through the section, the intake above the headlights. Now, much like the 408 Pista, the F8 also has the, what's called the S duct. This provides additional downforce. Now, in regards to the 488 piece, the 488 piece that provided an additional 20% downforce with its aerodynamic changes, which mostly in, was, was due to incorporating the S duct. The, the F8 also has that S duct and it provides 10% additional downforce over the 488 GTB. So if I just go through the list, it's got ADAS full pack. To be honest, I'm not quite sure what ADAS full pack is, but we'll go with that. It's got the adaptive front light system. In effect, I always talked, already talked about this. This means that these headlights follow the steering. So wherever you turn the steering wheel, the headlights follow you. I've got the same system on my 458 Spider, and it makes a hell of a lot of difference in the dark, a massive difference. So that's a great option. Now, because this car also has lift, which we'll talk about a little bit later, you have to have the adaptive front light system when you have lift because of the way that the, the lift changes the dynamics of the front of the car. You have to have it so that the, the lights adapt to that dynamics with whether the car is raised or lowered. So going through the rest of the listing, it's got yellow brake calipers. So as you can see here, this has got black lightened wheels. It's got the black F8 wheels and you've got yellow brake calipers. Yes, you have to pay extra for having the brake calipers colored yellow. Obviously, it's got the Ferrari shield. That is a cost option as well, as we've already talked about in my previous videos. Suspension lifter, as we already discussed. Here, you've got the, what's called the sports exhaust. Now, the sports exhaust with regards to Ferrari, when they give you the option of sports exhaust, in effect, it means like a colored, a, a carbon colored to the, to the rear tailpipes. It isn't actually a full blown sports exhaust. Talking about the exhaust system, this does actually have an ink and ink canal exhaust manifolds to add additional lighting to the engine, but that is standard on the F8 Tributo and the F8 Spider. If you're enjoying the video so far and you like this type of content, please make sure you click like, very important for us moving forward, guys. If you're not subscribed, please think about subscribing. So the F8 interior. Now the F8 interior is pretty much the same as the 458 interior because the 458 made substantial changes to the interior design of the Ferrari mid-engine supercars and this is pretty much the same design. There's only some subtle changes with regards to the way the air conditioning vents are designed but the interior is pretty much the same design. Also you have a smaller steering wheel which actually is, is a lot nicer I think than the 458 steering wheel. It's, it's a lot narrower and, and, and just has a better design overall, but we'll get into that a bit when we're driving the car. With regards to the actual internal specification of this car, you can see that it's got the central red stripe down the beautiful carbon sports racing seats. In my opinion, this is a vital specification for, for these types of cars, for the 458, 488 and for the F8. Also, with regards to the options on this car, the Cavallino embroidered into the headrest was also one of the options. So this is embroidered in Rosso, which is red. This, this actually was a paid option as well. I know, go figure guys. This central bridge in carbon fiber, that was also an additional option. Now this car also has lift. Now here you can see, instead of having lift on the center console, they've actually got a button, which is in more, in more logical area on the, on the lower section of the dashboard. So that is a lot better place. So that is a very good design separation away from the 458 to how they've got that um, in incorporated into the dashboard on the F8. Unfortunately, as I've detailed before, you cannot option the climate control system in carbon fiber. It's always been crazy. So it's this plastic material. It's, it's always the same in, in the 458, 408 and the F8. You just cannot option that in carbon fiber, which is always thought was pretty crazy. But there you have it. Now, as I detailed in one of my earlier videos when I was talking about my 458 Spider, these, the F8, I'm not sure if the 448 has it as well, I don't think it does, but the F8 has these seat belt attachments. I think it's great. For some reason, they switched it out on the 458. They didn't have 
these seat belt clips. Um, it's very important for my opinion because you can, you can undo this attachment. Gotta make sure I don't break, no. Oh. You can undo this attachment very easily, slot your seat belt into this corner section of the seat and it stops the seat belt it stops this from rattling against the back. It, it restrains it. When I'm driving my 458 Spider, it's one of my bone of contentions is that on the passenger seat when Jacob's not in the car, when my son isn't in the car, this is continually rattling against the back and you're wondering if it's scraping it and scratching it. Apart from anything else, the sound is annoying. So it's brilliant that they provide this in the F8. So instead of this rattling, you can latch it to the side of the seat nicely like that. Why didn't they provide that in the 458? To be able to lift the seat squab, to be able to raise it up on a normal spec car, you have to get your Meccano kit out and you have to unbolt the rails and you have, you've got three slots, three adjusting slots where you can raise the car up or lower it down. Unless you option the seat lifter. Now this has the seat lifter option. In effect, you can raise the seat by jacking it up like so, or jack it down. Now, of course, to fully understand if this really is a final tribute to the outgoing Ferrari non-hybrid V8, we have to get it out on the road. So let's take it out for a drive. Now I have driven the F8 Tributo before, the F8 Tributo and the F8 Spider. This was some time back when I was considering which way to go with regards to buying my own supercar. This was when I, was when I made the final decision to buy the 458 Spider. So I have driven these cars before, but it was a long time ago. And I remember the F8 being brutally fast, but having a bit of a disconnect with the emotion side. So it had a bit of an emotional disconnect, which is why I went for the 458 Spider. So first of all, I'm gonna cover off some ergonomics. The seated position with that mechanical razor for the seat, it makes it a lot easier to get into a really good seated position. And it's a really good seated position. Now it's got the, the large sized, so carbon, now it's got the large size carbon sport seats. These fit really well as I've detailed multiple times when I've been uh, covering off the internals of my 458 Spider. These seats fit you very well around the kidneys and around the shoulders. They're very comfortable, so I don't need to really mention anything more about them other than they provide you with a really good driving seating position. With regards to the steering wheel, the steering wheel is smaller and more compact than the 458 Spider. And I really like it, to be honest, it's really nice. The only thing I don't like is the continuation of making the controls or adding more controls to the steering wheel and making that a lot more complex. For example, the wipers, you actuate the wipers, you have got a pull system and a slight push system on the wiper buttons here, but it's a whole control mechanism to control the intermittent wipe and the different speeds on the wipers. I don't like that at all. You've got to look down too much. You've got a thumb control. Now, I guess you get used to it, but having a, a thumb control to turn the wipers on is crazy, in my opinion. With regards to the indicators, the indicators are much improved over the 458. With regards to the indicator for the 458, to be able to have the indicators on for a short period of time, you had to hold a long press, and for a long period of time, you had to hold a short press. So that was just non-intuitive, not very intuitive at all. Now that was changed for the 488 onwards, but with regards to the F8, they have these long extensions on the indicator stalk, so you can actuate them from the back or from the front. This is far improved. Also, you have a two-stage system on the indicator as well. When you press the button, you can feel it. So if you press it once gently, then you get the initial, what they call lane change free indicator flash. And if you press it harder, you can feel it really latch and it latches on, it holds the indicator on. And you just have to press either indicator button to, to cancel them. That is far improved over the 458, much, much improved. Well done Ferrari, you've got that a lot better. But with regards to the rest of it, does my head in having so much on there. I know good old Schumacher designed that interface and thought it was a good idea, but this isn't an F1 car, this is a normal road car. Anyway, I'll get off my sofa box about that. With regards to the rest of the internal dynamics, as I've detailed earlier, it's pretty much the same as a 458, but with a separation that you've got different controls for the, or different outputs for the climate control systems. Um, this is the same as the F12 in effect. Um, so that's much improved, but, the rest of the ergonomics are exactly the same really as a 458. 
the option design or the, the options that were specified for the internals of this cabin are a, a bit interesting. <clears throat> it's a bit midway really, it's not highly optioned on the internals. For example, you've got the driving zone which is an essential requirement, which is really cool. So you've got the electronic LEDs to show you when you're hitting the rev limiter, which is 8000 RPM on this car. And also you've got the carbon inlay on the centre section of the dashboard and the carbon centre bridge section. But the rest of the carbon fibre is pretty sparse. You haven't got a passenger display, for example, which is quite a costly additional option. So um, that was actually a good idea because it's just too costly, in my opinion, to have a passenger display system unless you're, you know, specking it up and keeping the car forever. Uh, there's the climate controls vents are not in carbon fibre, so they're base spec. So they've got the classic design, the classic spec design. Um, the door inlay cards, they're in their standard specification, uh, which is which is not, not a problem because they're lever anyway. With regards to the rear view mirror, you haven't got electrochromatic rear view mirror, so you don't have electronic folded mirrors, although you do have when you turn the car off. So you don't have manual electronic uh, folding um, door mirrors, but when you turn the car off, they automatically fold anyway, uh, but you don't have electrochromatic rear view mirror, not from what I can see anyway. There's no button on it to switch electrochromatic system on and off. It may be that it's automatically integrated into the cars now for the FA, but I don't think it is. Now, there's a couple of idiosyncrasies with this particular car. I think it is just with regards to this particular car. And that is that there's an interesting, bizarre marring going on with the front windscreen. If you move, if you move your eyesight around, it distorts the vision. So your vision is slightly distorted. Now I think the car's got either PPF on the windscreen or it's got a tint on the windscreen, a slight tint. Doesn't look like it's tinted on the windscreen even though the side windows are clearly tinted. I think there's either a PPF on the front windscreen or something weird is going on there. It distorts the vision. If it was my car, I would have that removed, in my opinion, because it, it jars you. It's it's not, not good, in my opinion. It slightly distorts the vision, that's the last thing you want. So if I move my sight around, you can see the cars in front of me are slightly distorted. It's almost like there's a lot of rain on the windscreen and the water is distorting your vision slightly without having cleared the rain with uh, using the wipers. But but clearly I'm pretty sure that's just an idiosyncrasy of this particular car. Driving position, as I've already detailed, is fantastic. Having that mechanical raise um, to, to adjust the seat squab higher makes a lot of difference. It allows me to elevate myself up higher. Now I need that a little bit, why? Well, because even though I'm six foot one, a lot of my height is in my legs. So my upper body is shorter in relation to my full height. So it's better if I could raise the seat up a little bit more. Um, so this really aids that, whereas you have to get your flipping toolkit out with a 458 if you haven't got a mechanical raise system with the sports carbon seats, of course. That's what you get with the sports carbon seats. You don't get the electronic capability to raise the seat squad. The rest of the specification is lovely. As you'd expect, it's a lovely place to be. Even though it's still a downstream, slight iteration improvement on the 458, there's nothing wrong with the 458 interior. It's a stunning, beautiful, lovely place to be. So there's no problem whatsoever that they've continued that as a slight iterative change to the 458 interior. The, 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 the screens are slightly changed as well and how they deliver their information but they're pretty much the same as a 458. most advanced version of what's called side slip angle control. In effect, that's like a drift mode. So it makes you seem like a hero when you're driving. 
but in actual fact it's the car pretty much doing it for you, you just have to boot it a bit and to put a bit of a correct in steering opposite lock steering in so it makes you seem like a hero but actually it's a lot of the cars electronics doing it but it is super cool obviously i'm not going to push that too hard it's not my car and it's you know not something i would do the conditions aren't perfect because it, even though the car is warmed up the road temperatures outside aren't, aren't fantastically high so you've got to be very careful at the end of the day this is a 710 brake horsepower car now the way it delivers its torque is interesting as well because ferrari uses this torque management system now what does that mean well what it means is that it won't allow you or it won't provide full 568 pound foot of torque earlier in the stages it'll only deliver the full 568 pound foot of torque in top gear in seventh gear but that's so it mitigates any turbo lag now there is pretty much no turbo lag at all and part of the way they manage that is with this torque management system allowing the torque to be delivered transiently in individual gears up to different stages so as you progress through the gear changes you get more torque in effect so it's their torque management system now they have a similar system incorporated into the 488 pista now i believe in the 488 as well but i know it's definitely incorporated into the 488 pista so again that's why the same engine is managed in the same way and why you don't get turbo lag also in the 488 pista now it's very 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 good it works very competently in effect delivers a zero turbo lag feeling there must be some turbo lag because turbos always produce some turbo lag but it's pretty much non-existent you you pretty much can't can't sense any turbo lag at all so it's very clever how they how they provide that management system that torque management system suspension on this car is very compliant it's a lot more compliant i'd say than the pista the pista suspension was a lot harsher as you'd expect being a track version of, or a track edition of the 488 this is a lot more compliant it really soaks up the nuances in the road overtaking is a dream in this car crazy crazy easy so competent you've got all the power you could possibly want in this car i mean watch this down two gears incredible you get a slight bit more kickback when you change gear i'd say as well than you do get in the 458 now i'm currently in sport mode i'm not going to put it into race mode why well like the 488 pista you don't need race mode on this on normal on normal roads um, especially with the temperatures not too high it's just why would i take the risk and it's not my car as we can see here brakes are astonishingly capable great bite very progressive feel a lot better than the 458 i would say they feel like 488 pista brakes i don't know whether they are exactly the same braking configuration i think they're probably an upgrade to the standard 488 gtb or 488 spider but they feel very very good far uh, much improved much improved braking over the 458 the 458 has a bit of a dull braking pedal and you really have to push on and you have to get the brakes ready re really hot in the 458 but none of that with this you get a good initial bite and it's just very progressive very very confidence inspiring the steering i can give my full opinion now yeah i think the steering has got a lot of better feel than the 458 even though it's electrically assisted which really surprises me that you get such good feel i think it's better than the 458 the way it weights up as you push on is, is very confidence inspiring i know i keep mentioning this but it's true with the brakes and the steering feel it really allows you to push on with confidence the turn is as sharp as with the 458 and the 488 yes you've got that improved downforce on the front with the s-duct i would say you, you can't really feel that as these sort of speeds you probably make the most of that on the track to be honest what i would say about the visibility is though especially with regards to rear visibility you've got the obviously the buttresses of, uh, with regards to the b pillar so you've got those buttresses there and your vision so they block a bit of your vision and the rearward vision is substantially blocked with the engine cover the engine cover and the engine cover fin which all, obviously is all part of the um, aerodynamics is raised very high so you you lose a third of your rear view vision for the rear view mirror so i don't quite like that configuration i don't know why ferrari did that but it's this the engine cover is raised quite high so it's, that's not too great but you can still see um, rear, but you can still see cars behind you fine it doesn't block the cars in any way you've got the, the that aerodynamic fin 
which is in the middle of your display so for the good or bad of it but it doesn't stop you from seeing cars in the rear view side have a bit of an overtake section again effortless I would say the acceleration is about the same as the 408 Pista very progressive again you you've got a sneeze factor whereas with the 458 you don't the accelerator or the throttle response I should say is a lot more aggressive on the 458 so I much prefer this approach the 408 Pista approach and the F8 approach um, to have been a lot more, lot more progressive on the throttle things they that Ferrari decided to do to improve the sound of the F8 to the exhaust sound was they had they they had a they configured a new membrane system now I'll be honest I don't quite know what this is but they put they had configured a, they had a new membrane system and ducted downstream from the turbos from the exhaust into the cabin of the car now it's not a full sound it is the actual sound of the engine but they ducted it internally to the cabin what that results in you get a sort of like hiss it's not a turbo hiss it's not the turbo spinning up but it's like a weird hiss that you get into the cabin i don't know that i'm much of a fan of that they don't seem to really have improved the sound i would say that the 488 pista sounds better than the f8 but that's probably because the f8 has particulate filters and at the end of the day with turbos and particulate filters you can't avoid it they're going to mute the sound and they do there is a substantial mute in the sound on, on this car they've tried their best they've had a, they've had, got in canal exhaust manifolds on this car and i say they've created this unique system where they've piped downstream from the turbos the sound into the cabin but it's not a great improvement uh, i just the car sounds fine when it's a tick over and when it's revving outside but it just lacks totally lacks that naturally aspirated sound they're just not going to get that back at the end of the day that's far and gone with the 458 the 458 the 458 closed that out as with all ferrari supercars or, or modern ferrari supercars from i would say from the 430 onwards it's sublime to drive slowly turn in as they're coming up to a really sharp corner here turn in fantastic and a bit of an s bend here down to the next gear turn in and you get the side slip question we posed at the beginning of this video is the f8 a worthy true final tribute to the outgoing multi-award winning non-hybrid ferrari v8 it's an interesting one with regards to driving dynamics and performance definitely yes and with regards to looks definitely yes with regards to sound and oral engagement no it's a real shame they couldn't use they could it's a real shame they couldn't fit the f8 with a naturally aspirated oral experience unfortunately legislation prevented that from happening with the need for having particulate filters and with the need for having the turbos to improve performance of the car with regards to fuel economy and of course outright a to b performance they had no choice they had to fit turbos they had to fit particulate filters to keep up with competition yes it is a worthy tribute with regards to performance dynamics and looks but with regards to oral experience and central engagement the jury's out thanks a lot again to watchers of bar for providing this stunning f8 spider for us to review for the channel also thanks very much to five zero supercars for organizing watchers of bath to be able to provide us the car very very much appreciated thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll catch you in the next video